We returned to the bathroom. I wonder if the temperature really went down. I opened the shower sliding door. Well, at that moment, hot steam blasted out at me. The steam was white. It looked like it was a cl just like a cloud, but the temperature of the shower water had already gone down. I s reached out and turned it off. It's off now, anyway. Glad that settled. Nami chuckled. Hey, what time is it? I remembered seeing the clock earlier. Uh, I think it's just past ten. Huh? Weren't you wearing a watch, Nami? I guess I must have dropped it somewhere. I know I had it when we were in the dining room, though. Oh. Well, I hope you look for it, but, uh, made it an effort to put on a weak expression. Sorry, but would you actually mind if I took a shower first? The steam made me really want to take a shower. I'll be out in five minutes, tops. The water's already warm, after all. It shouldn't be a problem. You don't need to explain yourself. Oh, right. Just wait a second first. Nami went into the shower, took her shorts and polo shirt, and squeezed them out. That's what she was wearing earlier, before the shower. There must be a problem with the pipes. The water isn't, gonna, isn't going down. I looked down. The level seemed to have dropped a bit, but the water didn't appear to be going down. Is something stuck in the pipes? I checked around to see if there was a plug and couldn't find anything. I peered through the gap in the drain all on the top. Yuck. A black look. Oh, God, no. 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 That's nasty. That is fucking nasty. Long black hair had clumped together and waved in the water like seaweed. It was too long to be Nami's hair. This must be what fucked it up. It creeped me out, making me think of a drowned body. I hesitated for a moment, closed my eyes, and plunged my right hand into the warm water. I felt I could feel the long, thin hair sickle my hand and fingers. I forced myself not to to pay attention to it and grab dozens of strands and then I gave them a tug. I felt like part of it opened and some of the strands of hair having been ripped off. I pulled at it a good while, sometimes weakly, sometimes harder, and everything in between. Eventually the hair split into two clumps and far more hair than I ever imagined fluffed up from under the water. Oh god, this is so nasty. Oh god, so nasty. This is an- I hate- this is nasty. Like, this is one of the few things, like, that really is, to me, disgusting. Like, wet hair in your shower drain? That is the most disgusting thing in the world. Like, it, it's so nasty. It, it just makes me want to puke. The wet hair that I pulled up was all twisted together. It looked like some kind of wild animal. I gritted my teeth and left the room. Nami took a look at what I'd pulled out, covered her mouth with her hands, and looked away. I don't blame her. It was filthy and muddy. The word disgusting wasn't even enough to capture it. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's not even, na this is not nasty. This is disgusting. This is fucking disgusting. Like, oh god, no, 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 no. Deep. I need I need to take a sip of water. Oh god. It's a good thing I didn't eat lunch beforehand. I threw it all into a, into a trash can just beside the sink and rolled out a ton of toilet paper that was hung on the wall to wipe all the, uh, wipe all the hair off my arms. Maybe someone got a haircut recently. I said playing dumb trying to brush aside how creeped out I was. But it wasn't just a joke. It's hard to believe that much hair could clump together just from hair that fell out naturally. I washed my hands using water from the sink and more soap than I normally use. How does it look now? Is it still clogged? The water's starting to go down. Great. There might be still hair in there, but as long as it's good enough for me to take a shower, I'm okay with it. All I know is I never want to touch it again. Alright, I'm going in. I'll get out as soon as I can. Sorry if someone, somebody comes back home in the meantime. Okay. Nami turn to the sink and started washing her own clothes. I, f I forced the door to close, putting a little muscle into it and heard it snap shut completely. Hey, it does shut after all. The water was hot, but it wouldn't be so hot that I couldn't get in anymore. I slowly climbed into the tub. Ugh. I splashed some warm water against my face and let out a big sigh. Felt like I had been brought back from the dead. The owner of this house might as well not come back at this point. 
we could get some rest and be out of here in the morning. I felt better and so did my thoughts. Though, what was I thinking? It's pretty selfish. It wouldn't be that easy though, will it? I twisted the handle to turn on the shower. The water wasn't ridiculously hot anymore. I felt nice. I had been careless though. I'd forgotten the soap and a towel. I rubbed the mud off my feet. Using my hands, the mud turned the, the water dark. That was a western style bath for you. I could say whatever I wanted using someone else's bath. I liked how it made me feel. Okay. It's about time that I got out, huh? I said extra loud so Nami would be able to hear, but there was no reaction in the other room. I knocked on the door. I'm coming out. No response. Weird. Did she go somewhere? Oh, I know. She's hiding so she can surprise me. But that in mind, I put my hand on the door and said, I know you're there. But the door wouldn't open. It opened wide enough for me to maybe get a finger through, but it snapped shut again. Come on, I know you're just screwing around with me. Open up. Convinced that Nami was holding the door shut, I rattled the door, tapped it, and pulled it, and pulled it. But it really did start to seem like Nami wasn't even there. It must be because I forced the door shut. I tried lifting the door and pushing it in all sorts of different directions, but no matter what I did, the door would only rattle. It showed no sign of opening. <laughs> Suddenly, hot water from the shower I knew I'd turned off came back on. I tested the handle and confirmed that it had been completely turned off. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I had a bad feeling about this. Nami, open the door. Oh god, I don't- no, no, no. Go, go, be go. Oh god, I already know where this is going. I, I, I already know where this is going. I don't like this. Nami, I shouted out as, as loud as I could, but there was no response. I looked down and saw a metal bar about the size of a chewing, a, a stick of chewing gum had been wedged, wedged into the rail of the sliding door. What's this? It had been put there to prevent the door from opening. Clearly. This thing was the reason why I couldn't open the door. Hmm. I tried to remove it, but only ended up hurting my thumb. It was no good. What am I supposed to do now? I checked the window, but it was too small. I would be able I wouldn't be able to fit through it. My bad promotion turned out to be spot on. The hot water pouring out of the shower was getting hotter, and the white steam was getting thicker. It started getting hard to breathe, and I couldn't take it anymore. I got out by breaking through the glass. Wait a minute. As I was change, changing my clothes, a scary sort of vision came to me. The temperature went up slowly this time, so it was fine. But what if the door had completely shut on Nami? Fortunately, she wasn't strong enough to shut the door all the way, but... What if I had gone in before her? I started to get worried about Nami. It's possible she went looking for a watch. I had to hit the dining room and she's sleeping on the sofa. She probably went to go to the watch. It's possible she went looking for a watch. I headed down to the dining room. But Nami wasn't there. I went inside just in, in case and even looked around the kitchen further in, but I expected she wasn't there. Or she could, or could she have gone? I saw a flash of white clothing in the hallway. In a panic, I turned and faced the door, but all I saw was a hem of a white dress. Who was there? I ran off in pursuit as fast as I could. Still, there wasn't any trace of anyone in the hallway. Weird. Nami would never wear anything like that. Without anywhere else to go, I wound up back at the entrance. Hmm. I could hear someone talking from the second floor. I listened hard, but then I could I suddenly couldn't hear anything. That's odd. I'm pretty sure I heard someone just now. I quietly headed up to the second floor. At the top of the stairs, I could hear someone talking again from the other side of the hallway. As I got closer, the voices became increasingly clear. It seemed to be a conversation between a young man and a young woman. Did whoever own, owns the house come back? The voices sound cheerful. I wondered if, if all this creepy stuff that went on was just some sort of misunderstanding. If that were true, then how would we ever be able to explain to them everything we've been doing here? I felt conflicted as I stepped towards the room before me. I figured I should start with an apology. I lifted my arm about to knock on the door, but the conversation was suddenly cut short. The door opened slightly. Ah. Uh, did they notice I was here? I froze up and waited for them to appear. A white hand appeared from the gap in the hole. A girl's hand. Um, uh. He spoke without thinking. The person inside suddenly drew back. 
She also seemed to be at a loss for words, but in the next instant, she was suddenly apologizing. I'm sorry. I... Huh? It was Nami's voice. What? Nami? Sachu? I opened the door fully and saw Nami standing there. You've got to be kidding me. What? The tension I was feeling was gone. What were you doing? I thought the owners of this house had come back. I did too. Don't surprise me like that. Why'd you even come to a place like this? I was so worried when you weren't there after I got out of the shower. You don't understand. I just listened. Nami's eyes started to sparkle as she was about to tell me some sort of grand adventure. I went looking for my watch, and I heard talking. I figured the owners of the house came back. Same here. That's why I came up here. And then the thing is... <laughs> Nami laughed and slapped my shoulder. It's so weird. Just listen, okay? I'm listening. What do you think it was? Who knows? Exactly. So listen. I already told you. I'm listening. She started... She was starting to irritate me. I nervously knocked on the door. Mm-hmm. They didn't respond, though. J they just kept talking, and, and I opened the door, and then, and then, and then, <laughs> don't laugh. Just hurry up and tell me. Nobody was there, so what do you think it might have been? Stop screwing around with me, all right? I'm worried here. I raised my voice at her. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Nami cut her sentence short and changed her posture as if she was about to announce some very important news. It was a radio. A radio? See? Right there. Nami points to a black radio in the middle of the room. Right. Well, then why didn't, didn't you come back down afterwards? I was worried. Yeah, about that. Nami looked on top of the dresser. There were two western-style dolls that had been placed there. I don't like this. This seems... Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is another instance of this... It's, it's haunted dolls. It's... it's it's fucking haunted dolls. I hate haunt. I hate this. I hate this. I hate it a lot. It's haunted dolls. Fucking haunted dolls. Both of the dolls were wearing the exact same outfit and red cloth jumper skirt. I feel like I've seen these dolls somewhere before. These dolls? I picked them up. Let me have them. Nami took them very delicately with both hands and pressed both of them against her cheeks. Huh? Mommy looked so relaxed. It was a face I'd never seen her make before. Oh god, this is this is stressing me out. Like Are you okay? These dolls feel familiar somehow. They make me feel like a kid again. They just look like the like dolls to me, but I guess it's because I'm a guy. No, I wouldn't say that. These are special. Hmm. Mommy closed her eyes, lost in the moment. I'll never understand, woman. Well, anyway, I saw some, some, one kind of like a doll earlier. I'm guessing she's the owner of this house? Yeah. I think it was a lady in a white dress. Nami looked at me. She seemed as though she was still dreaming. It concerns me a little, so I'd like to go back down and check everything out. I turned to leave. Okay. Nami reached out and placed the dolls back like she was handing some great, handling some great treasure. As she left the room, she waved sadly at the dolls. Bye-bye. Oh, God. It's a creepy dolls. No. Mm-mm-mm. mm, -mm. mm, -mm, -mm. I hate creepy dolls. I hate creepy dolls. Creepy dolls freak me out. Do not like this. Do not like this one bit. Mm-mm-mm. mm, -mm. mm, -mm, -mm. Alright, let's continue our search, shall we? Yeah. Nami still seemed a little out of it as we headed downstairs. This door seems suspicious. It was the door at the front of the entrance hall. Maybe the lady in the white dress went through it earlier. I opened the door. It continued deeper into a long, dark room. It's like a tunnel, huh? There were candlesticks lined up against the bare stone wall. I turned on my flashlight. There was a door in the back. If we open that door, Nami stared, started mumbling. Yeah, we'll be back at the entrance hall again. Like we went back in time, huh? This hallway is a tunnel that goes back into the past. She said with a serious look on her face, you're not making any sense. I paid her no mind and continued along. The door was, in, was a 
deflated shutter type. I could feel the wind outside blowing against the gap. The floor right in front of the door was soaking wet. Once we open this, we'll be back in the entrance hall, right? I opened the door. Whoa. Suddenly, I felt something cold softly touch my face. It was a cluster of vines wet from the rain. I pushed through the vines and made my way out. There, I found a balcony facing the back garden. A wooden scalpel thing had been set up there a long time ago. It had become worn down over the years. In the center was a single wooden table that started to rot, with three deck chairs set around it. Each had been turned to face in different locations. There was an overhead trellis with vines hanging down, making it look like the entrance to a haunted house. The rain had stopped, but the water still dripped from the vines, hitting my face and shoulders. What an awesome entrance, huh? I had intended to be cynical, but it looked like Nami hadn't heard me. She suddenly tugged at my hand and pointed to one of the pillars holding up the trellis. Hey, look at that, huh? Isn't that something shining there? It's true. A beam looked like a long, thin shadow, and I could see a damn yellow light near the bottom. It didn't seem like a flame or an electric light. It was a gentle light with some sort of sheen to it. Is it the spirit of Princess Kauki? Huh? I thought you'd say that. I walked up to the pillar. Oh, it's a flores it's fluorescent paint. Two lines about as thick as my finger had been drawn with some space between them, one over the other. But why here of all places? I bent down, down toward and turned the light towards the lower line. The paint had dried on top of the wooden pillar's original paint making it appear crusty. A straight line had been painted over it with fluorescent paint. And upon closer inspection, it seemed that something had been used, perhaps a nail, to etch something in the wood. A straight line along with what appeared to be letters on the right of it. What's this? Something written here? I strained my eyes to see what it was. But it was old and worn out and crusted with paint, so it was too hard to see. We'll be able to read it if we scratch off the paint, Nami said as she started scratching away at the paint with her fingernails. It was fun watching her hard at work peeling away the paint, and as soon as the pillar revealed what it was written underneath, Nami, that's what had been carved there, I felt like there was something black in the pit of my stomach. Nami stopped moving her finger the moment she saw it, but went right back to peeling off the paint. Um, hey, Nami, I tapped her on the shoulder behind, but she was ignoring she ignored me and kept working on scratching the paint away. She ended up scratching off the paint up to the up to centimeters above and below the painted area. Most of the old paint had totally scratched off. There were actually two lines underneath both of the line, a total of four in all. And beside each line was a name. The names Nami, Naomi, Naomi, and Nami had been carved in that order. Slowly, Nami looked behind me. She had a stoic expression on her face. Comparing heights. Huh? Oh, right. I see. I wonder who Naomi is, huh? Well, I'm Nami, right? But who's Naomi? Hey, hey, what are you talking about? I gave Nami's shoulder an exaggerated shrug. That's the name of the girl who lives here. You're overthinking it. Am I? You are. It's just a coincidence. What's wrong with you, Nami? You're not acting like yourself. You look really dark, too. I hope it's just a coincidence, but... What about that lady you mentioned earlier? The one in the white dress? Huh? She looked like me, didn't she? I didn't see her face. Oh. All sorts of questions came to mind. Why would Nami's name be here in a place like this? Who was Naomi? What did Nami mean by that? Why would her name be in a place like this? Why would Nami's name be in a place like this, Nami? Nami looked intently at the height comparison lines. She seemed pale. I knew we had to get away from this place first and foremost. Come on, let's go inside. We just got soaked from those mines right after our bath. But Nami still had a dark expression on her face. I brought my mouth up to Nam Nami's ears. We could just take a shower together this time, you know? Don't be stupid. She finally laughed a little. All right, let's go. Sure. I took Nami by the hand and we walked towards the shattered, sh the slated shutter door. I looked back before we went through the door and I could see speckles of the fluorescent paint still left behind on one side of the dark balcony. Creepy! We, should we check that room? We still hadn't fully checked everything on the left side. I started walking that way. Do you think it's open? I stood in front of the door and turned the knob. It sure is dark, huh? The only illumination was provided by a single candle in the corner of the room. There was a switch on the wall. 
the lights turned on, there was a dazzling bright chandelier hanging from the ceiling. It sure is spacious here. Say, hey, isn't that a piano over there? Tommy pointed to the right side of the room. You're right. It's a piano hall. We went inside. Okay, what mansion has a piano hall? Like, this seems odd. It's a little odd, but okay. There were sliding glass doors leading out to the backyard. It may look quite beautiful during the day, but at night, the black against the glass just reflected what was in the room. Before I knew it, Nami was standing in front of the piano, tapping away at the keys. You can play the piano, Nami? I can't play it well enough to answer that question with a yes, but I do like the sound of the piano. Hmm. Well, what song is that? I don't know. I don't know the title or even who composed it. Someone taught you how to play it? No, I just remember hearing it a long time ago. I'm not sure when, though. I find it odd myself. Life's like that sometimes, yeah? Suddenly, Nami's hand stopped moving. What's wrong? Is it over already? Nami was looking past me, over my shoulder. Hey, that's... When I looked behind me, I saw a painting of a lady hung up on the wall. It was a woman in her thirties wearing traditional Japanese clothing, standing with a mountain range behind her. Her long hair had been brushed over her left shoulder. She had wildflowers in both hands, which she clutched against her chest. Picture? Obviously. But do you notice anything special about it? Nami smiled, smiled as if she was challenging me. I started to panic. Was it painted by a famous artist? I didn't know anything about paintings, though. Hmm. Looks like an early Picasso, doesn't it? I made it up on the spot to sound intelligent. She's pretty, isn't she? I try and change the subject. Hey, are... is it the Hyphsiliums? That's probably what it is. Hey, those are the Hyphsiliums she's holding. Oh yeah, now that you mention it. But there's something else, too. Hmm. Does she look like me? Huh? That was sudden. I took another look at the woman in the painting. At first, I didn't know what Nami meant. The lady's makeup was very old-fashioned, and the painting seemed old, so I couldn't really see a resemblance to Nami, who was a typical modern-day girl. But as I looked at it more, I saw similarity in the eyes, and that's when it hit me. Nami bent her head the same way whenever she smiled, and had a tendency of slightly lifting up her chin. It made her look less symmetrical. When she got careless, the expression even made her ever look so homely. It made me feel uneasy. Like handling a newborn or babies who can't even support their own neck yet. I did love it when Nami smiled, but every time she did, I felt a sense of loss and fear. The smile of, a la of the lady in the painting made me feel that exact same sense of unease. More than her physical features, it was her, her expression that surprised me. I don't see it. She doesn't look like you at all. I lied because I found it creepy how similar they were. Oh. Nami smiled lightly and tilted her head. It was like the painting came to life. It sent a chill down my spine. But, you know, Nami, you're not as pretty as her. I turned away, so I didn't have to meet Nami's gaze. So you're saying I'm ugly? Nami slammed the piano keys and stood up. I didn't say you were ugly. You said it, was, you said it just now. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Nami pounced angrily. Now her face looked nothing like the picture. No, no, it's just I started to lighten up my expression. Okay, I said it. What, are you just teasing me? Then I'm not playing the piano for you ever again. Nami turned her back to me. The wind blew in at that moment. Uh-oh. The curtains blew up to the lit candle on the piano and caught on fire, which quickly spread across the entire curtain. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Okay, now it's off. Everything's just on fire. They just... <sighs> oh, everything's on fire now. It's... <laughs> the, the creepy painting that looks like her. Like, I have a... I have a bad... I, it's just... This is a bad feeling. Like... 
I feel like there's some time warp shenanigans going on. Ah! The burning curtain fell over to Nami's face. Nami! Pulled the curtain off in a hurry. The metal part that attached to the rail ripped right off. I hurled it to the floor and stomped on it with my feet in a panic. The fire was strong, but fortunately the thin curtains didn't provide it much fuel. Since I had nothing else to travel to, I managed to extinguish the fire. Phew. The whole house almost went down in flames. Are you okay, Nami? She didn't respond. She stood there facing the wall, her back turned to me. What's wrong? A burn? When I asked this question, Nami turned to me and slowly nodded. Where? Where's the burn? The face. Huh? I approached her, confused, until she pointed at the lady in the painting. When the curtain was flapping around, the heat must have melted the oil in the painting, making the lady appear to have been burned on the right side of her face. Oh, is that all? Man, you really surprised me. I thought you meant your own face. I laughed, relieved, until Nami said something that made no sense. Mom? Sis? What do you mean, sis? I didn't know what she was talking about. Nami's an only child. I stood there dumbfounded, and then Nami started, suddenly started trembling and ran for the exit. Where are you going? Flustered, I grabbed Nami by the arm. Let me go. I have to find that mummy or else... That mummy? The one in the wheelchair? Yeah, so let me go. Nami struggled so hard, I thought she might rip my arm off. Calm down, Nami. What's going on? Let me go. I'm not letting you go until you calm down. I grabbed Nami by both shoulders and looked her straight in the eyes. What's this all about? Explain it to me. Hi. I used to live in this house. I lived here a long time ago. I snoozed. Okay, there's some time shenanigans. I feel like this is like a spirit possession, like type situation like it's like a time it's like some weird time shenanigan 